21st birthday. That was the first time I died. Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Xbox 360 game, The Darkness. This game is a first person shooter, released by 2K Games in 2007, for Xbox 360 and Playstation 3. The Darkness is actually based on a comic book of the same name. In fact, you can unlock artwork from the comic series whilst playing through the game. I believe the game's plot is a fairly accurate take on the comics. I don't want to reveal the storyline in case I spoil it for any of you who are intending to pick the game up. In addition, I'd like to point out that although I've beaten the game, all the footage shown in this review is taken from the beginning to avoid spoilers. The concept of the darkness plays an integral role in the gameplay mechanics. As a general rule, you want it to be as dark as possible, so you'll frequently have to shoot lights to provide shade. This will enable you to use your darkness powers, which include spawning dark rooms which can destroy enemies in clear paths, and impaling enemies on tendrils. You've got to work out the best way to use your powers in particular situations. This game also incorporates some simple puzzle solving elements. As you play through the game, you run up new abilities and strengthen your powers, so it pays to try out your moves as much as possible. The whole darkness idea helps the darkness stand out in what is a somewhat oversaturated market for many games being labelled as COD clones. In my opinion, the concept works very well, it gives the game a very distinct image. Needless to say, Darkness also features more straightforward FPS segments, with a number of different weapons available to help you on the quest. The difficulty level you choose obviously determines how difficult these sections are to complete, but even on easy, there's no room for complacency. You've got to decide whether to go in all guns blazing or pick off enemies one by one. I usually opt for that, although sometimes it's best just to go in and hope for the rest. The single player campaign should take about 8 to 10 hours from start to finish, so it's not the longest game ever, but I think this game puts quality over quantity, so I had a lot of fun completing objectives. As I got into it, I found myself getting hooked, so I yearned to try just one more mission. It was rewarding to see the credits well, once I played through the game, but I did think the final fight was a little weak, with just a couple shots needed to kill your rival. The plot does a good job of moving the game along, it keeps you interested. And despite my indifference towards first person shooters in general, I found this game a lot of fun. As I mentioned earlier, the concept of darkness works really well and makes the game much more memorable than it otherwise would have been. Maybe the gameplay isn't quite as polished as in the really popular shooters like Call of Duty, and the difficulty level doesn't really increase all that much as you play through the game, but the darkness deserves the high rating I've given it in terms of gameplay, 9 out of 10. Now, if you're looking for a game with cute visuals, I don't think The Darkness would be your kind of game. Maybe you should try Super Mario Galaxy instead. As you'd expect given the name of the game, the graphics are, well, dark. That's not to say it looks drab or anything, I'm sure this was deliberate, as it wouldn't really work out if the game was trying to put across this dark, sinister image, then you have loads of bright colours splashed everywhere. The locations, which are based on New York City, are well designed, and the lack of light makes them feel rather creepy. The cutscenes, which help you keep up to date with the plot, are also polished, and as this game supports HD, you can't really complain about the graphics. The visuals get a perfect 10 from me. The background music features a selection of upbeat pop songs and a bit of hip hop. Now I'm just kidding, the soundtrack is also fairly gloomy. The score, which was composed by Gustav Grefberg, does a pretty good job of capturing the mood of the game without being particularly memorable. The sound effects are, are good, but nothing extraordinary. You can also use the TV to access a couple of stations which stream music videos, the old tier station being my personal favourite. I give The Darkness 8 out of 10 for all the year.
The controls for this game are pretty much what you'd expect from a FPS, with some subtle differences. When dual wielding the weapons, you can use the right trigger to fire your right weapon and the left trigger to use your left gun. You can use the left bumper to manifest the darkness and the right bumper to use the darkness power when in shade, with the D-pad being used to cycle through weapons and darkness powers. Obviously, use the left analog stick to move and the right one to control the camera. Whilst A uses something, B reloads, Y jumps, and X can be used to direct darkly. I haven't got any gripes with the controls, so they get 10 out of 10. The darkness boasts three difficulty levels, easy, medium and hard. So if you cleared the game on easy, you might want to step up the challenge and play through it on a harder difficulty. If you're a true completionist, you might want to hunt for all the collectibles, which unlock bonus content, and complete all the side quests, which no doubt increase the game's replay value. That said, after beating the game, I wasn't immediately compelled to play through it again, probably because I'm not the kind of guy who tries to find everything there is to find. An important feature to consider when judging a game's lasting appeal is its online capabilities, since playing against human opponents can often keep you coming back for more once you've cleared the single player mode. Unfortunately, darkness multiplayer features are pretty poor. You only get four modes, deathmatch, team deathmatch, capture the flag and survivor. Coupled with that, the servers aren't exactly a high activity. You often have to wait a while to find an open lobby. To rub salt into the wind, when you finally get into a game, the whole gameplay experience is crippled by lag and weird glitches. Now I know this may have been something to do with my connection, but I can only judge the game on my own experience, and for me, the online games were pretty much unplayable. I give The Darkness 5 out of 10 for the last appeal. Overall, I would say The Darkness is an excellent shooter, offering a creative twist on the genre. I really enjoyed my time playing through the campaign, and the graphics really complement the dark nature of the gameplay. However, the online multiplayer really lets the game down, and it feels like they focused all their resources on the single player mode, because the lag renders the game almost unplayable. I'd give The Darkness 8 out of 10 overall. Before I go, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Robbie, who sent me this game for my birthday. If it wasn't for him, I'd probably never have had the pleasure of experiencing this game, as first person shooters are hardly my favourite genre. The game certainly was a pleasant surprise, and I'm really glad he sent it to me. I'd also like to use this opportunity to point you in the direction of his channel, he was under the name The Secret Game Room. In terms of the types of videos he does, his channel is pretty similar to mine in that he does pickups, reviews, tags and shout outs, but his videos are obviously a whole lot more entertaining than mine. I've also been enjoying a new series he started recently called Worst Game Spotlight, though I wouldn't recommend you pick up the games he featured in those videos as that would be defeating the object of the videos. As always, I really hope you enjoyed this review, thanks for watching and I'll put up another video soon, bye. I've been very, very generous to you Jackie. In fact, I got a surprise for you on your birthday. It's in the closet. Have a blast.